What's up guys, I'm Austin Silva and I'm here today to show you how to replace your battery module. But before we get started, I'd like to encourage anyone uncomfortable with this repair to reach out to customer service and send us your board to do the battery swap for you. Last thing to consider before attempting this repair is that our service comes with a six month warranty and any issues that arise with self-repair will be your responsibility. So if you're not confident in your ability to work with electronics, just open a service ticket on our website. Our technicians usually complete repairs within 24 hours. So today we're gonna do a GTS battery module swap, but the steps for the GT and the GTS are the same. So except for the connector, it's the only thing that's different. Uh, the GTS is a locking connector. Everything else is exactly the same. So let's quickly go over the things that we're gonna need for this uh, repair. Obviously, we're gonna need a battery module. We're gonna need a torque wrench for the axle bolts. We also need a torque wrench for the uh, cable glands. We also have a regular uh, socket wrench for the axle bolts just to speed things up. Uh, we have a trunk carrier, which helps uh, hold the board on its side. If you have one, great. If you don't, it's not necessary. Uh, we have some electrical tape going to use to tape the ends. We have hardware kit, new axle bolts. Always replace those when you take them out. We have a new gasket for the controller. Uh, we have a rag just to clean things up. T25s. Um, I always like to have one by hand just to, I like to do the final tightening by hand just so I know how tight everything is, but the electric one's great for quickly removing them and setting them in. It just says T20, but it's the it's the T20 with the hole in the center. A little Allen key for the mag handle. Sharpie, this is to mark the screws after we set them in in a bin to keep our screws in. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start on the bottom and take the bumper screws off. Take the bumpers off. Now we're gonna take off the foot pad screws. Before we flip it over, we're gonna take this foot pad connector off just so that it doesn't fall and pull on this connection here. We're also gonna take off while we're down here the uh, cable gland on this side. So this side has the motor cable and this side has the battery cable. And this is the side that we're going to uh, take this rail off. We're gonna take the axle bolts out, making sure we're on the battery cable side. So if you're on a GTS, it's the uh, orange cable. Now we have the axle bolts out. We're gonna take this rail off. So in order to do that, we need to remove uh, the two screws here holding the controller module and the two screws here holding the battery module to the rail. Now this controller module has some space underneath. So whenever you're loosening or tightening these screws, it's a good idea to just support the uh, controller module from the bottom, hold it up so it's not uh, making these screws go at an angle. All right, and then the rail just comes off like that. So before we hop into the controller module, I um, just want to kind of clean up some of the sand, especially around the controller module. We don't want any of the sand getting in. this straight up. Before you go in and touch the controller at all, you wanna make sure the power's off. If you're working on a carpet, you know, you wanna make sure to ground yourself on a large piece of metal before you put your hands in, just in case uh, you don't want any static electricity to cause any shorts. So coming in here, um, this is the battery cable here. Separate from this cable, this is just the, the switch. So you have the main power cords coming into this connector here, and then you have communication wires. We're gonna go ahead and pull the communication wires out first. So there's a little locking tab right there. Squeeze that, pull it straight up. So let me show you why we put tape over the connectors. Without this protected, just using my fingers, not even uh, touching it against metal or anything, can actually turn the battery module itself on. And if these wires were disconnected, the lights wouldn't have come on. I would have no idea if the battery module was on or off. And if I went to go plug this connector in, it could spark 
It could electrocute me. It could damage your controller. No bueno. So be sure to tape over your connectors. I'm just gonna take some electrical tape, toss this over the connector. So with the GTS, uh, you have this locking tab. You're gonna want to use two hands. So you're gonna brace it with your fingers here. You're gonna push down on this locking tab and then over on the connector, just like that. So the reason you wanna brace these cables here is that you don't wanna push this connector uncontrolled into one of these transistors, end up breaking those off. Same thing with the connector back here. If you did knock one of these off, you just broke your controller and that's an expensive fix. Next, we're gonna take this gland off. In order to do that, this uh, outer nut here should be able to get with your hands. And then to take this off, you're gonna want you get an open-ended wrench or a crescent wrench. If you have a trunk stand, you can use it for this part just to hold the wheel on its side. Yeah, and there's two screws uh, on the other side of the battery box that the last thing's holding the battery in place. And now we're halfway done. Let's put the new one in. So if you didn't have one of these trunk stands and you went to go take this battery out, because this battery is holding this controller down, as soon as you take this screw out, it's gonna want to fall apart and this controller is gonna wanna fall down and you could end up doing some damage. So always set it on its side. If you don't have a trunk stand, just set it on, on the rail. Just grab this one. Okay, once the battery module is back into the rails, go ahead and set it back on your stand. We're gonna toss the new cables. I'm gonna thread both of these by hand, make sure that they're not cross-threaded. After it's close though, you want to torque these down to spec. So now we'll take and connect these. Make sure when you're putting this in that you don't wrap it around the power uh, wires there. Make sure the tab is on the side that accepts the tab. And then it goes down. And it goes down until it clicks. You want to hear a click? Just like that. All right, once those are in, uh, we're just going to make sure this cable here doesn't have any extra slack. Maybe use this as a reference. But just go, have this go straight in. And once that's Add a good tension. We're gonna take this collar and tighten it down. Again, we're gonna start by hand and then we're going to take our torque wrench and torque it down to spec. Okay, so we're gonna take our brand new gasket and to orientate this, you can see this little L here fits into there. Just make sure the gasket itself isn't uh, twisted up. We'll take the controller lid very carefully make sure your, li your uh, light bar is going over the LEDs in the back. And very carefully just put it straight on. You can kind of see the gasket around. You can kind of follow it with your eyes, make sure it didn't pop out. And then as we tighten this on, I'm just gonna hold this in place just so it doesn't 
accidentally get bumped because if that gasket pops out even a little bit, it gets pinched, it'll compromise not only the, ga the gasket, but over time you could uh, allow water and debris into the controller, which could cause some damage. So we're just gonna seat a few screws, kind of a star pattern. You kind of want to skip around to the edges just so that you're not torquing one side of the box down um, because the other side you could end up cross-threading or popping the gasket out. Once they're all seated, I'm just gonna go around and give it maybe a quarter to half a turn. So we're gonna count the screws here just to make sure we have all 10 screws. I'm just gonna, as I'm counting them, uh, mark the screw. Before we put everything back together, we're just going to power the board on. Make sure the board has power. Make sure the LED and light bars work, which will give us an indication of the communication wires uh, being connected properly. Everything looks good. Go ahead and power that back off. We're gonna put the rail on. Okay, so axle block, it's got a notch at the top. It goes along with the axle uh, notch top here. So you know that that slides on this way, okay, toss this on, and just make sure it lines up with the axle there, if it lines up down there, it should line up on the outsides too. Okay, and so this controller is kind of being pulled down by the motor and axle, so we're just going to line this up and we're gonna push the controller up to the rail to hold it tight and flush with the holes here. That way we don't cross thread them. And then we're gonna put the axle bolts in. Then we're gonna put the pads back on. Foot pad connector in. And lastly, we're going to put the bumpers in. So make sure the long screws, the longer screws, go into the foot pads on the ends, and the shorter screws always go on the very bottom. I'm going to toss this cable retainer back. So that's it. Um, that's how you swap a battery module. So after swapping your battery module, before you can get riding again, you're gonna have to activate your battery. To activate your new battery, you can open your app, click on settings, go to service and registration, click on your board, and install battery. Thanks for watching.